For loops in C++, are you using the wrong kind of loops? I know it's a silly question, but is it? Let's have a look at different loops today and help you find the correct loop for the future. We will move through all kinds of loops and you will encounter usually in the wild and also have a look at the common mistakes. Have you ever wondered which one is actually the fastest? Stay till the end and find out. Hi, my name is Zen and welcome to my channel. The task that we want to compare is quite simple. We want to just sum up a bunch of double values. What we are doing here is we create a vector of double with uh, around about 10 million elements and then we fill this vector with random numbers um, just to don't accumulate all zeros or all ones. We just want to have a bunch of random numbers. So we use this to actually fill our vector and then we have here the different kinds of loops that we want to compare using this benchmark function. The benchmark function itself is not all too complicated. So we have the input vector, we have the function that we want to use to sum up all the values, and then we have the name just to generate also a nice output. We will use here the standard chrono functions to actually measure how long our code runs and afterward put it out. And this is where the magic happens. Here we use the different functionalities to sum up all the values that are in our vector. So let's have a look at the first loop that you will encounter usually in the wild. Because this one is so common, I just called it the classic loop. So you get a vector and then you just iterate over the complete vector size. So you create uh, an index variable and you use this index variable to uh, calculate the sum and each time you encounter an element of the vector you return the sum. Quite simple but also quite effective. So this is some loop that you will see a lot in the wild. However, what you will also see a lot in the wild is very very common mistakes using this kind of loop. So the first one that you will see is that the variable that you're going through is uh, either a wrong type. So for instance, here it's a double, so this will do all kind of weird stuff and the iteration is weird, or it's uh, here initialized outside of the loop. What you might additionally come across is something like this, where the variable is not uh, initialized outside the loop, so everything is fine. But because people think auto is something that is really cool, uh, it needs to be everywhere, they initialize i using auto, and here the zero is used, which if you scroll over here, you see it's an integer. So i will actually be an integer and not the correct type, which is standard size t which then in turn means that if your vector grows too large and standard size t can hold more values than a normal integer, all of this will blow up and not work. Another mistake that is very, very common is that people use the postfix operator. The postfix operator um, is slower than the prefix operator. The prefix operator doesn't need to hold the value that is being changed it's just changing the value, whereas this one is actually a lot slower. So these are some of the common mistakes that you see. The last one is that it's using the add value, even though you're never checking whether this is actually throwing an exception. So the difference between this, uh, the bracket operator and the add value in this particular code is that the add value will throw an exception if i doesn't exist. However, because we're using the size, we always know that i exists, so we are just paying for the additional checking without having any benefit. The classic loop was more something that you could also encounter in C programming. The iterator loop, however, which is the second kind of loop, is more common in the C++ environments and also it's uh, heavily influenced by the standard library, which is also providing all of the iterators. So what is happening here is that we use the begin of the vector to create an iterator. And as long as the iterator is below the boundary of the vector, we increment the iterator and then we just dereference the iterator to sum up our values. 
This is running very, very fast. And it's also kind of readable code um, given that you are familiar with the iterators uh, in general. Uh, so if you feel uncomfortable using iterators, I would uh, recommend to highly invest in it because it's really a good way to do things. However, also in this you loop, you will encounter a bunch of mistakes in the, in the wild. What you want to do here is that you really use the const iterator. So usually all of the containers of the standard library have the possibility to fetch the normal iterator or the const iterator, which is denoted here by the additional C. The const iterator doesn't allow you to change the value in your vector. And because you're only summing up in this point, you don't want to change the value. So the const operator is the right choice and it's also a little bit faster. And we also have here the same problem that the uh, index had before that here for the iterator there is the postfix operator used whereas you could also use the prefix operator which is just that little bit faster. If you're familiar with Python then you will know these kinds of loops. These are range-based for loops and they are very very great to write good and readable and maintainable code. So the syntax is as follows that you create um, element that is part of the vector for each of the elements that are in the vector. In this case, you just create uh, this uh, element and then you sum up all of the elements of the vector. It's really nice and readable and highly maintainable code, so I love this kind of loop. However, also there, uh, people are doing a bunch of mistakes. So the thing that you need to look out in range-based for loops is that you actually assign here the right type. Using auto for this is usually great because the types of the, the elements that are inside a specific container, they can be really, really weird. So if you're looking at maps or indices or keys, then usually they have quite long types. And if you're not really, really familiar with the types of the standard library, then just auto is the right one to use here because it will just give you the right type. However, you should then also use the right specifier in this in this case it's const because you don't want to change any of the elements and you don't need to have a non-const um, reference to any of the elements of the vector so you should always use const in this uh, in these loops if you're not planning to change anything the last kinds of loops that we will have a look at are the algorithms from the standard library the algorithms are a great tool and if you have the possibility to use an algorithm, always choose to use an algorithm. They make your code really portable, highly maintainable and also many of the people are very familiar with these algorithms and if you have the choice, just go for it. The first loop here in particular is using the for each algorithm, which means that we loop also through all of the vector using then a lambda function that we apply to every element of this vector, which in our case is then also summing up all of the elements and afterwards we return the sum. Here again, uh, really the devil's in the details. So it's important that you use the const iterator or the, yeah, the, the const value that you get back from the vector and also that in your lambda function you have the const element that you want to access. Because you're not planning on changing anything, this is a safe bet here and it will just make your code faster. The second one, and this is really the one that you in this case should go for if uh, you don't have any other uh, objections why you cannot use it. This is just using the algorithm itself. It's called standard, uh, standard accumulate and it's just taking the begin and the end of the vector and then an initial value where it should start uh, accumulating. And it's a one-liner, it's great. And there are many, many different algorithms that behave. So something like sort, find, uh, and, and many, many more. So if you have the choice of using some of these, always go for it. If you want to squeeze out a little bit more speed, then after C17, you have the possibility to extend your for each macro or your for each function with an additional specifier where you tell the loop 
that it's okay to uh, to do this in parallel. Um, so this is basically the same code as the normal for each loop. However, it is allowed to run in par parallel and can squeeze out a little bit more. One caveat though is that if you do this, you need to make sure that nothing here inside will actually destroy the parallelism of your uh, functionality. So if you access something or if you rely that your code is executed in a specific order, then you need to be careful in using these parallelized loops. So let's have a look how all of these different loops perform against each other. So we will uncomment all of these lines of code and then we will compile and let it run. We compile our code. In this case, I'm using the Mison build system. So uh, if you're not using a good build system, really have a look at the different build systems. I think Mison is great, um, but this is just as a side note. And then we will execute the program, which is running here in loops, and we will see the different results. So. Uh, what we can see here is that they basically all give the same value as the sum so i guess they are all doing more or less the right thing but what is very interesting is the different times that it takes obviously i have only run it once so uh, take this with a grain of salt it's not the perfect benchmark and if you're doing professional benchmarking probably you should do things a little bit differently than uh, what I have done here now. But the order of magnitude or the direction is quite okay, let's say. We can also run it for a few more times just to see whether those values stay consistent, but they usually should be staying consistent. The first thing is to note that basically if you're doing it wrong, so uh, if you're using the classical example in a, in a wrong way, you're heavily paying for it. So this one is uh, by far the worst loop that you can ever program. All of the other ones are more or less in the same ballpark. The iterator one is actually quite fast in this example. And also the uh, classic one is quite fast and in the same area as the parallel for each loop. The other ones are a little bit slower, but also in the same ballpark. This has to do with optimization. So if I am looking at uh, my, my build files, what I'm optimizing for, so what my compiler is optimizing for is in this case speed. So this optimization S flag, I highly recommend if you want to have fast code, you should use that. And it is optimizing for speed. So it will pull all the tricks that it has in its lever to actually get the code as fast as it can. So usually for this normal, for the classic loop and for an iterator loop, it will do heavy loop unrolling and it will really do a lot of tricks to make the code fast, even vectorizing the instructions if it's possible and so on and so forth. And this is the explanation why those two are actually quite fast uh, and the iterator one actually being the fastest in all of this comparison. However, if your algorithms get more complex than just calculating a simple sum of your vector, then these differences between the different approaches might vary. So if you benchmark your code, really look at your example that you're looking at. For instance, if you want to sort something, the different numbers here, they will be completely different. One thing that is mentioned here, because for me, I mean, uh, this is just a virtual machine with not a lot of parallel cores. So if you have really a good processor and everything can be uh, hyper threaded and so on, then probably the last one will be even a little bit faster. So that's all for today. I hope you learned a little bit about loops and are now ready to choose the right loop for you in the future. If you like the content, please subscribe and otherwise start your machine and try all of this out. You can find the code on GitHub. And other than that, enjoy coding.